to the channel, uh, you may have seen I posted something asking where should I take this? I look like such a belly when I catch myself in the mirror. Is that what I look like out and about? Influencer caught in a while. Uh, I, I put a post up saying um, don't really know where I'm going with the channel, but that's okay. I've decided it doesn't matter where I take the channel as long as I have fun. Look, this is not something I'm doing for a career. I just do it for a laugh. So with that being said, today will be a bit of a travel video. Every now and then, Snide gets out and about. Not a lot. I don't get out a lot. And that might make me sound like a sad case, but that's because first and foremost, I'm a dad. Beyond all else, I'm a dad. I hate being away from my kids. Um, I go to work and I'm with my family. That's, that's what I do. It's the only important thing in life as far as I'm concerned. But I'm on a business trip and I've come a little bit early. So I do have a day free. Can I turn you around? There you go. Uh, free to explore. So I'm in Suzhou in Jiangsu province. Um, this could be, you know, it's almost something of a first impressions of the city video. Um, but I have been here before, but it was like, I want to say like maybe 10 years ago. So let's see what this city has to offer. So far, I haven't seen much. Just came from the airport in Wuxi, straight into the hotel here. I'm in the Shangri-La, give you a little, little look-see room tour. Exciting stuff, isn't it? When people show you the hotel room, they're all standard, man. But they are nice. I will give them that. It's a Shangri-La, you know, you know what you're getting. Yeah. Okay. There's your shower. There's your crapper. There's your bath. And uh, that's it. Never really understood the point of a room tour video as part of a YouTube, but there you go. I feel like it's something I have to do. So there we go, we're off to a proper start in terms of a, uh, a, uh, a travel vlog. Let's go and have a look at the city itself, that's way more interesting. One of my favorite things about tourist spots in China is seeing the IEs taking their new profile pictures for the WeChat for the moment. I love it. The most popular pose is stand very still and touch a plant, but only lightly touch the plant or object. I love it, man. I love it. Look, look how much effort goes into making it perfect. I'm not poking fun by any means. It's just sweet, man. It's so sweet to see uh, a couple of older ladies out just taking pics in front of stuff. It's the best. And I just think it's so sweet because they'll switch positions, both take the same picture, touching the same object. Um, but at the same time, this is such a typical scene. I go over here, husbands having none of it, man having none of it. They're asleep on the phone, not in the mood for those antics. But we will see a lot more of that as we go into the city. Um, it's just something that I, I feel, I don't know if it's unique to China, but it's certainly not something I see when I'm back home, is, uh, is the photo taking and the way it's taken and then the analysis immediately and the frustration about if the pick isn't perfect and they'll take it about 10 times. It's just so good, man. We're about to tuck into a hot pot here and it's in the Su style hot pot. So you just get like a set meal. You get all of this going on. You've got a uh, tofu here, some potato, what looks like egg dumplings, uh, some dried tofu over here, some seaweed, got loads of meats, some quail eggs. Black tofu? Is that a kind of tofu? It's not a meat. I thought it was like a liver sort of thing. Like black pudding. 
Oh, okay, okay. Blood tofu, which does not sound good, but we'll find out. And some lian o, oh. not to be confused with hai o. Oh. And in it goes. If you've not had hot pot in China, you're missing out. All of the sauces, you mix them up, make up your own sauce. Got sesame. There's a spicy one up there. Get some garlic in there. Hua shang, the chopped up peanuts. What's going on up there? Good times, man. So you mix it all up in your bowl. Add some chopped veg, dip it in. That place was so, so good. I am full. We ate way more than we needed to. Normally, I'll have a hot pot and I'll leave it feeling hungry. Not the case with that one. It was so good. Um, so now, now, <laughs> so now we're going to go into um, the touristy area here, which is uh, Pingjiang Street. And uh, Jiang meaning river, Ping meaning peaceful, safety. Um, and this area is obviously like it's it's huge for tourism um you'll see all the people dressed up all the ladies dressed up in traditional gear that's where my colleague's just gone off to she's just gone off to go and uh, get dressed up in some traditional uh Qing dynasty outfit um so you know it's the standard affair that you'll get in a tourist spot but uh the architecture around here is so cool man the classic uh, Jiangnan style, so it's the whitewashed walls with the grey slate roof. Not too dissimilar from the Lingnan stuff, but um, at the same time, it's obviously its own thing. So let's go and have a look. Now this was going to be um, a more of a cinematic style, this video, but unfortunately, I dropped, dropped my ND filter. Had to cut there to avoid the copyright strike. I dropped my ND filter, so it's nerdy, but if you're filming 4K 60 frames per second, you need the ND filter to get that nice motion blur. So if this video is a little bit jarring, I do apologize, but um, we'll just have to go without. I brought out the one filter, dropped it, got a big stain on it that I can't seem to remove. But never mind, we continue. It's still gonna be a cool place. I mean, when you're in a place as photogenic as this, it doesn't really matter if I'm doing LUTs or if I'm just doing regular footage, because I just want to show you what it's like around here. And um, like I was saying at the start of the video, this is kind of like my first impressions of the place. Not entirely, because I was here many, many, many moons ago. But uh, I'm seeing it with fresh eyes in terms of making a video about the spot. And a lot has changed in those 10 years, for me anyway. Now, in terms of things changing, not a lot will have changed. The shops will have changed, uh, but the buildings themselves won't have. This street is actually 2,500 years old. It's one of the oldest streets in Suzhou. It's older Suzhou itself. Um, but there's a phrase about this that you can't go back again. I'm sure you've heard it before. You can't go back again. No matter which place it is, when you go back to it, it's not the same. Either the place has changed, objectively different, or subjectively, it's a different experience for you because you're not the same person you were when you were last there. Which might sound a bit deep, but I think when it comes to travel, it's, it's a really good line that you can't go back again. So in light of that, I guess that's part of the rationale behind filming these places and doing um, the explorations and stuff, because it'll never be the same again. Either physically or for myself, it won't be the same place, which is a pretty cool thing to think about when you go to see somewhere. Let's turn back around, have another look. For context, so you know where we are in place and time, this is a, a clearly a mad tourist area, but it's a Sunday just after lunch. So it's prime time for all your tourists to be out. 
Now I'm curious, if we just go a couple streets away from these areas, and we dip into where the people actually live, like over there, what's it gonna be like? So there's the Jiangnan architecture that I was talking about. Jiangnan is, uh, it means literally south of the river. Uh, and that's in reference to the Yangtze River. What's going on over here? A cat cafe that is spilled out onto the roof. Pretty cute. The zoom on this camera isn't great. There's a big market in China for this kind of cat, for the main coons. If you live in an apartment and your cat's staying indoors, you may as well get a pretty cool one like that. Massive. All right, we continue. Sujo facts. As I mentioned already, it's over 2,500 years old, this city. It's often called the Venice of the East, or is Venice the Sujo of the West? I put it to you. Obviously, we know which way around that one goes, but there you go. That's what it's described as. Um, it's famous for its classical gardens, for silk, there's a great silk museum here. If I have time, I'll pop in there, but um, I am back to work tomorrow. I'm just here for the afternoon before heading into work, before I head office. But while I am here, what I will show you are these streets, man, because it's cool, really cool. Now, about this um, dressing up thing, I mean, look how popular it is. How many have we seen just in this little short video already? And my colleague, in fact, that's where she's gone. She left me behind after lunch to go and um, do a photo shoot. She's gonna go get dressed up and do a photo shoot. I might catch up with her later so we can talk to her about that. But um, it is interesting that I've been here long enough in China that when I first came here, you wouldn't see this stuff. And certainly not the, uh, the younger generation, you wouldn't see them doing it. Which I think is really cool to see now that um, the youngsters are kind of embracing history and uh, the classical styles and celebrating that and showing it off. And when you think about it, what is the equivalent for the West? What's the equivalent in the UK? Nothing, we don't have anything like that. You know, you might dress like kind of more traditionally British at a wedding or something, but uh, we just don't have that element to our culture. I just think it's really cool to see, really is good. So instead of following the herd, down the main street. Let's duck down one of these side ones. And 
go up an adjacent street instead. <coughs> and that way we get a better look at the buildings and the rivers instead of me just filming someone's back. As you can see down here, we're getting into where people actually live. In these beautiful old buildings. I wonder how they feel about these tourists. Obviously, there's a lot to be gained from having tourists, but like anywhere, it can, uh, can go too far. Where I'm from in the UK, um, I live right next to a, a tourist area. And the issue over the summer was that there were too many tourists there. And it's funny because it's an area that um, relies upon tourism to survive. That's the source of income for many people. But because when there's too many tourists, the locals get them priced out of their properties. They can't afford to buy a home there, which means that the people working or coming to that area for work in order to serve the tourists can't afford to actually be there or live there, which means they have to travel in and then it becomes too expensive and so on and so forth. So I wonder, I wonder how the local guys here feel about this huge amount of tourism and it's only getting stronger like as i was saying there's a renewed interest in old china ancient china and places like this are just a magnet so hopefully it's all positive i'm sure it is but perhaps there is the same concern about too much tourism i will say this though this is cool right sometimes there is a concern when you visit these places that it's just a facade and that the main street is made to look a certain way for the tourists but we're quite a bit away from it now and um, it's the reality it's actually a beautiful place look at the buildings and these are just people's homes won't be too invasive hopefully good there's no one in there i'm not poking my camera into people's houses But this is just a village like any other. It just happens to uh, be a particularly beautiful one. I imagine, actually, now I think about it, I spoke about this on another video when I was talking about, um, I was in the village and I was talking about village life and the rules associated to buying property here. That a lot of these properties, I imagine it'll be the same rule as in my wife's hometown, that they're not actually ever going to be for sale. Um, I'm sure they can commercialize them some other way, like renting them out or maybe converting them uh, into like a little B&B &B situation. But they can't sell them. And this place will probably always remain like this. Because it's an area of conservation. Of historical interest. So whilst things might get renewed, new buildings, seemingly new buildings, will go up. They'll be built in the classic style. Look at this, we're quite far back now. Away from the heaving crowds. And it's still just as lovely. Just as clean. Just as beautiful. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go into this little village down here instead. Way more interesting than uh, the crowd. Now I did dip down that alley and it was cool. It gets really cool, but I'm also acutely aware of how invasive that is, man. Foreigner stumbles off the beaten path and starts uh, filming people's homes and them fishing outside their house like I don't want to be part of that problem I'm sure it happens enough as it is leave them to it we'll keep going down this road instead out of the village area and into what seems to be a more exclusive gated community over here 
beautiful new apartments. But look how tastefully they have been done. That's a modern interpretation of the other side of the river. Very well done. It's smart to go from ancient buildings to then a self-service stacked car park where you scan the QR code to get your car back. Amazing. That's another thing I love about China. It's a real mixture of ancient China being preserved and respected and then the modern conveniences like scanning your face for a self-service vending machine that would get robbed in England. <laughs> it wouldn't last a minute. Okay. Okay, the next mission is to try and find my friend Sophie. She's in one of these little side streets getting her makeup in there. The clothes fitted and all of that. Shortcut. take for granted in China that um, I probably should be showing you. QR codes are king here, they really are. So it negates any kind of language barrier first of all if you have the apps and stuff, if you've got WeChat at least you could get on there and you can order. Uh, but it's just more convenient, you can also order ahead and pick it up and everything and that's for most shops, it's pretty cool. This bad boy is delicious. No added sugar, big ice, collect in the shop. Why restrict your lifestyle to a geographical location like Westlife when you could have it all? 
We're now out of the ancient tourism area and heading into, well, I was going to say into a more commercial area, but the place we were just in was equally as commercial. I mean, it's just selling stuff left, right and center, isn't it? And business is booming for everybody. So let me rephrase. Uh, it's on a bigger scale in terms of the commercialism and it's slightly more modern. Let's have a look. What is everyone buying on this street? What are they going for? Clearly we're still in a touristy part of the city. For example, this fella. We got. You got your goose heads and your goose necks there. We got your uh, standard barbecue items. Your steamed goods. More barbecue over there on skewers. I mentioned this previously when I was going around Lingnan TND in Foshan, but the way that uh, foreign brands will blend in quite tastefully like that. Look at that Dairy Queen and the roof above it. It certainly retains its Chinese flavor. Now I'm not going to be one of those one of those guys who goes around and compares everything to back home and says how great it is here. But when it's this obvious and it pops into my head, I'm going to talk about it, right? Because somewhere like this, the equivalent back home would be your high streets, right? Say you go down Newcastle, you go down uh, Northumberland Street, right? Or Grey Street or somewhere like that in Newcastle. I'm trying to think of a small town, the equivalent of Suzhou. That's, that's what I know, right? Um, you'd get you'd get the beautiful architecture up above all the shops you'd get um your classic buildings but then underneath you'd get the very garish in juxtaposed against that you'd get the um jd sports you'd get the turkish barbers you'd get the vape shops you'd get the cash converters cex all of that whereas here i mean it speaks for itself right like the architecture is there up above let's have a look But the shops themselves are of the same ilk. It has not been taken over by shite sportswear shops and vape shops and American candy stores and all of that. It's selling. Chinese stuff to the Chinese people and they're here in their droves man yet Western media points the finger at China says that it's a failing economy and there may be elements where it's struggling of course but go down your local high street but he's, he's making some candy here go down your high street at home and tell me if it's as doing if it's doing as well as this place is I want to go out on a limb and say it isn't
You can't go past a building like this and not go in. Let's go check it out. Compare this to your local food court. Hi. I will pass on eating a scorpion. No, thank you. Look at the queue for this place. Yes, time. Me, Rob. Okay. okay, Rob. Joe. Joe. Uh, Joe. Okay. Joe. Uh, maybe next time, which will come here? Which way? Okay. Which will come here? For east, uh, west, and for east. Next time I'm here, okay. Uh, yeah, for subway. Yeah, yeah. Subway. Yeah, yeah. Go subway. Me, no one up here only must me. Ask them. Yeah. If you want to buy a picture for me. No, I don't need to buy now. No, no. Uh, next time, if you want to buy, you, uh, picture for me, okay? I find you here, okay? Uh, next time. Uh, subway. We'll start up here, okay? No problem. Uh, no, 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 you only ask me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> Persistent with the fake watch. My English name, Rob. I am the boss, it says. How can I show this without promoting him and getting my YouTube in trouble? But that is hilarious. All right, let me just hide his details my English name Rob I am the boss just to let you know okay I'm now in Tanglang garden or the Surging Waves Pavilion, which is a private gardens, obviously now open to the public. You, uh, you pay for entry. I came in free because um, my friend Sophie is doing a photo shoot here. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna have her a wander about and have a look at the place. This place is 900 years old over 900 years old, built in the uh, Song Dynasty. Obviously it'll have gone under a lot of repairs over the years, but it is absolutely stunning. We'll have a little mooch about in here. Have a little mooch. Catch up with Sophie when she's finished a photo shoot and uh, head into the city to see what it's like at night time. Let's go up here.
So while Sophie's having her photo shoot, her princess moment, I am going to go and have a look around these gardens. So you can see how popular it is to get all dressed up and come to these places, these historical spots for photo shoots. And you can see why. And uh, they're everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Man, can you have, imagine having a garden like this to yourself? These formal gardens. Right in the middle of the city. Right, anyone who tries to tell you that the economy is down, have a look at the crowds out here, man. It's actually ridiculous on that bridge. It's getting dangerous though, so many people out here. <laughs> I'm not actually allergic. It's just. <laughs> I'm not allergic. It's just uh, an excuse not to eat seafood because I don't like it. But we will try. So another Sujo specialty, it's uh, noodles with crab meat mixed in. Do you mix this in as well? I'm assuming so. You don't have to, you can. Separate? Yes. And here? That's a snack, that's a tofu, tofu, tofu pudding. Tofu pudding.